Hello everyone, Crystal Vizier here. Welcome to a bit of a different video, more of an audio really. We are going to be talking about something that I think, you know, in light of everything that's happened in the last few months and a few little developing bits of information, uh, I feel like this is a topic that really needs to be discussed and it's none other than, it's about Gex. Gex the Gecko, uh, there was three Gex games uh, released on the PS1 and a few other consoles and I'm here to talk about why Gex would work today, why there should be a Gex 4. Now there was a video about four years ago, Gex 4 must be made by Gex Up, huge Gex fan. Other than that, that sparked a lot of discussion but it, I could argue that even back then it wasn't as relevant as it is now. Gex has the potential to be a have a resurgence that I think could be very, very beneficial to the overall industry, the platforming industry, the gaming industry, sort of the whole world of parodying. And really, I think if you look into this, you'll see why exactly it's such a brilliant idea to bring him back. So obviously, we'll firstly sort of address the fact that the game Ukulele uh, was announced and raised millions of dollars. This is the 3D platformer, adventure platformer developed by X Rareware people, um, Platonic Games. And obviously Rare did games like Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong, stuff like that. Um, and then Gex was done by different developers. It was done by, uh, you know, Crystal Dynamics. Yeah, Crystal Dynamics and um, published by, I think, Eidos originally. I think at least one or two of the games. Anyway, the point is, is that this game came from nothing, right? There was about two pictures, a one minute video, and it raised that much money. Now, that was based on the fact that people had faith in the developers. Now, with Gex, there's something else in, you know, in today's sort of world that really works almost better than it did back then. So obviously the whole point of Gex is that he's trapped in like a, like a television sort of world where he goes to locations inspired by different TV shows and movies. Now if you think about today, what are, what are people doing more than they're doing ever? They're watching TV. They may not be watching it on a television, but they are watching television shows. And you've seen so many shows now become popular and movies and stuff like that at a level that they are just, to me, they're just asking to be parodied. You know, for example, could you imagine a Gex level where you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, the birthplace or the, the home of Breaking Bad, you know, kind of a dodgy sort of meth dealing sort of thing. If you want to PGFI it, you could, you know, or The Wire in the streets of Baltimore, kind of cop show type thing. Game of Thrones, medieval, you know, uh, you could have anime levels. So it was like the anime channel in Gex 3. You know, you could have some kind of Death Note or Code Geass or some kind of crazy sort of anime level or, you know, cartoony. Speaking of cartoons, the Looney Tunes, you could have prehistoric levels just like in Gex 2. You could have an Ice Age level. You could have levels where things are toys, such as Toy Story. You could have superhero levels. You could have all these parodies, right? And I almost feel like it would be more funny if in sort of today than it was back then. A lot of the time Gex was a little bit grating with his references and stuff, but today references are kind of, to me, you know, like the whole popularity of community sort of proves that the NBC slash Yahoo screen show. I think everyone sort of, people love references. I'm a huge reference buff. I mean, if you're subscribed to my channel, you probably like the fact that I'm always referencing stuff. So with Gex, it's like the perfect thing. It almost seems like the game came out 15 years too early because I was just thinking, I was talking about this with Nintendo 64. Really, what, how wouldn't Gex be successful today? He's a wise-cracking gecko. He's, you know, he can, you know, 3D platformer, you're bringing those sort of games back. People are interested. You know, he's a known character. Now he's not on the level of Crash or Spyro by any means. Um, he's probably similar to Croc. You know, Croc, uh, the crocodile or alligator? I don't even know, this is Croc. You know, he, the thing is, yeah, Ge Gex is, it's kind of like that second tier popularity in terms of PlayStation slash sort of 90s. You know, you have things like Mario and Sonic and Spyro Crash, and then the next level is sort of, you know, Croc and Gex and stuff like that. And so Gex is one of those ones that, you know, there's so much potential, there's so many level ideas that it, it makes the game worth it based on that, really, that simply put, really, what else would you, you know, out of all sort of games to make a comeback, you could almost argue he has more of a place in today's gaming sort of, 
situation or whatever than Crash Bandicoot because Crash Bandicoot a lot of the time will be under scrutiny no matter what. No matter what Crash Bandicoot game is released, people will still find a way to criticize it if it's not exactly the same as the original. While Gex isn't as loved, it's not as a revered series. So you can kind of make these changes, but already the gameplay and or at least the, the, the sort of situation, the scenario, actually already fits modern times you know better than it did back then you know you could have a wrestling level wwe you know slash tna slash just professional wrestling in general i, mean, I remember in gex 3 is like a stone cold steve austin type boss or something like that you know that you know big play in popular culture you know that that's that's how it works um as well as that you know the fact is is that th this is actually well within reason to actually happen in the first place. Uh, when, I, when I say that, it's because apparently what's going on is Square Enix has basically given people permission to, if they can pitch this, you know, as pitch this, right, and then I think they can, I think they can either do a Kickstarter or something like that, they can pitch it and if they accept it, they actually can use that intellectual property and make their own game and obviously be published by Square and then be given money and stuff like that. So the point is, is that people, if, if someone has the right manpower, the right ability, the right idea, you can actually go to Square Enix and go, guys, let's make a Gex game and then, you know, obviously money, you know, becomes a thing, but, you know, if you have the skill, then maybe it can happen. So I guess this is kind of a bit of a, you know, it's not it's not really a very worth, you know, major attempt at drawing attention. I'm only one man, but really I think that this is a, a market, you know, this kind of 3D platformer resurgence is something that actually could be within within reach, especially because a, a series like Gex, which is so easy to use, you know, actually can be made. Like it's not like Crash Bandicoot where it's owned by, um, Activision or Spire owned by Activision, Gex is kind of like a free agent. It's just a matter of someone coming along with a skill to be able to do something about it. But um, honestly, I'll, I'll keep that. I'll keep this short. Hope you enjoyed this. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this because I think that there's a lot of things I'm missing out on. But this is more like you know to be corny, like at a school or something or a uni. Opening a dialogue. I think it is opening a dialogue. You know, it it is about about Gex and sort of that kind of parody sort of culture that goes on a lot of the time you know like i mean weird out is so successful love him or hate him but weird out sells millions and i think gex today you know still with that teen rating or you know even pg 13 or you know sort of m you know that kind of middle of the range teen tween age i think it could be a huge smash hit but uh, that's just my opinion tell me why i'm wrong or tell me why i'm right in the comment section thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure See you later.